The other night, I woke up in the middle of the night. It's been kind of nice. You know, Kimberly's gone, and I miss her. But you know what? I'm getting some sleep. <laughs> I tell you what, man. She say, we got this California king bed, and I sleep on the edge like this. And so I have this fear of falling, you know. And so, and so half the time I'm sleeping on the, on the uh, little bed table next to the bed. Have you, have you ever done that where you, you're sleeping on the corner of the bed? And, uh, but uh, the other, the, the, how, many, how many people do that? I, 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 you know how it is. And so um, I woke up the other night, and I was listening to Brother Hagen, and I fell asleep. And um, I woke up, and he wasn't talking anymore, but the Holy Spirit was. It was kind of strange because it kind of went from Brother Hagen into the Holy Spirit. And the Holy, so I'm, I'm wide awake, and it's about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I, I wake up a lot. Between three and five, usually be between three and four. I do some praying. I, you know, do some different things. I pray and I kind of figure, tune in. And the Lord says, "I'm stronger than them. I'm stronger than them." Okay, so whoever them is coming against you, He's stronger than them. And so we were. I was. I was. It just hit me so hard. And it was. I don't want to say an audible voice. You know, woke. But <laughs> it, it, it just got me. And so, you know, this is, we, we're in a time of preparation. And, uh, you know, uh, I heard something today. Uh, there's this place called the Department of Homeland Security. And they made an announcement. The head of the, one of the head guys in Homeland Security said the United States is a Muslim country. How many people heard that? You guys need to turn your radios on. They're announcing that stuff now. Did you hear that? It, it, was, it, was, it was in the media. Don't worry, it's out there. These guys are doing little sh shots on the side and everything like that. So, you know, I've had an interesting week, and I deal with different issues throughout the week. I like your haircut, Todd. I got one, too. Praise God. I need some Perrier. And I want I to deal with some concepts with you, okay? And one of, the, one of the issues we deal with with the Bible, we, we, we have two minds all the time going, okay? And we mix things up. We have this, this Greek mindset where everything's lineal, okay? And we talk about the Hebrew mindset the Hebrew mindset is not based on the Hebrew cycles. See, in Hebrew, everything's based on cycles. You know, increasing cycles. Okay, you see, there's a difference here. What happens when we're trying to debate people, I had this gentleman call me up today, and... Actually, I, I saw this phone number from Chicago. I called it back. I get phone calls all the time from all over the place. So I call this guy back, and it's this guy I argued with last year. And um, his friend used to come to our congregation and is no longer able to. Was that nice? <laughs> He's no longer able to come to the congregation. Well, this guy became a Christian. Okay, you see what I'm saying here? With the Greek mindset, it's lineal. Okay, that means it's almost black and white. Right? The Hebrew is based on cycles, a system. Okay? Now, one of the things we have to decide when, when we look at things is how we view, view circumstances. Okay? And we're going to get into this a little bit later. Now, if you're in the Hebrew class, what is this? Okay. Now, if you were a, if you, if that could be a staple, couldn't it? Could that be a staple? Now, this is called one dimensional. One, let's just put one D. Now, what is this? 
Right. It's a table. Okay. No, seriously. And see, this, this, is, this is something that we have to deal with. And we're going to get in the partial reading. And then let's, let's go to the partial reading first. Uh, we're in the uh, Todot. And uh, we're in Genesis 20. We're going to read Genesis 24, 26, 24, and 25. Genesis 26, 24, and 25. And we're, we start dealing with Isaac. And we understand how the covenant works. The covenant is based on progressive revelation. The covenant of progressive revelation goes from the patriarchs to the tribes to the nation. After the nation is the nations, the world. In this, we come across Isaac. Now, Isaac understands... <clears throat> verse 24 and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said I am the God of your father Abraham do not fear for I am with you I will bless you multiply your descendants for, for the sake of my servant Abraham so he built an altar there and called it upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tents there and there Isaac's servants dug a well Isaac was in constant battle he was in the promised land but he never left the promised land he never left Israel. Abraham came in. He bought, battled to get there. He stayed there. Jacob ends up becoming the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob ends up leaving and coming back. In a sense. His bones. So as the, he built there an altar and called it the name of the Lord. He pitched his tent there, yet Isaac's servants dug a well. Wherever Isaac dug a well, it produced. What would happen after he dug a well, they would come and push him off the well, and they said that the, in the Hebrew commentary, it would actually dry up after he left. And he would go dig a new well, and he would flourish, and they would come and push him off the well, and they, 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 they did this on, on and on, but he never left the promised land. The question this week, are you where you need to be for your blessing? Are you where you're supposed to be for your blessing? We have a lot. I, I was talking to a gentleman to, uh, yesterday. He called me up. I've known this guy for about 10 years, 12 years, and he always wants prophecy. He, he goes, I go, I haven't talked to him in a couple years. He he, he, he's a man of God. He's always talking about Jesus. He owes about $250,000 in child support. Doesn't pay his bills. And he's always talking these big deals. And, you know, his lifestyle and what he's talking about doesn't match up. You know what I'm saying? And he wants, wants to be the prophet. He wants my individual time to prophesy over him. He wants an audience with me. And he, he goes, well, do you know anybody that's a really good at prophecy? I said, uh, I don't know. What church are you going to? He was trying to set me up. Ooh, flatter me. Ooh. Hey, yeah, I don't have time to get flattered. So he, he's calling me up, you know, you know, trying to butter me up. Ooh, make me feel good. Hey, he's not going to make me feel good. It's so, except for Tinas is wearing a picture of Wiley on his back of his shirt. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> All right. He, he has a picture of Wiley on the back of his shirt. Did your wife notice that? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't wear that shirt. No, he doesn't wear that shirt. <laughs> so he calls me up, and he's buttering me up, and I'm sitting there. The Lord already told me he's trying another scam. And, and I said, well, what, where, what church do you go to? And he told me the church. I go, well, they sound like they probably have some prophetic people over there. He goes, well, not really. I go, why do you go there? Oh, the entertainment. I'm not funny. <laughs> Come on. I cook for you. I clean. I do all. No. But, <laughs> but if, what, what do you do? I mean, so he wants to come in, and he's tithing over here, and he has this big million, multi-million dollar deal. And the Lord told me he was unequally yoked. And I said, the Lord told me you're, you're unequally yoked in this deal. I said, is there a Muslim involved? He goes, yes. So I'm, I'm hearing from the Lord. 
And he's trying to manipulate me so I can give him this, you know, prophecy. And you know what? I've had to deal with this before. And this is where, are you where you're supposed to be for the blessing? He's telling me he's going someplace where he's not being fed. He's there to socialize. And the Spirit of God is there, and sometimes not, sometimes is. And he's like, what, what am I supposed to do? Just come in and give him a big injection every time I see him? It might try and be selfish. If the, Lord, if the Lord tells me to pray for somebody, I'll pray for somebody. You know, and I, we go to Korea, and they line up for hours, and we prophesy. And sometimes it's the only time these people ever get real prophecy. You know, and we're not here to play church. We're trying to equip people for this season. Kimberly's over there battling with these folks from the World, Conference, uh, World Council. Council of Churches. And I, I saw this, I went to their website, and they got all this really nice stuff. This, you know, we all need to get along and all this other stuff, and, you know, and, 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 and equality in the word, you know, Unitarianism, and, you know, they, they're, they're, they're mixing everything up all the time. Isaac knew where the blessing was, and he stuck there. And when it starts raining out, and you're running around outside looking for an umbrella, guess what? You're going to get wet. It doesn't change. It's the same in the spiritual realm as the natural realm. Okay? <sighs> okay, got that. Now I'm going to get to my teaching. <laughs> that's the question. I try to give the Parsha reading. The Parsha is a, par a reading that's broken down. The, the five books of Moses is broken down in five, 52 sections. Okay? So that's the question. Are you where you're supposed to be for the blessing? You know, um, Jason's the longest temporary person we've ever had. <laughs> You've been here longer than the permanent people we've had. <laughs> Praise God. We're going to have to reward him here at the... Hanukkah time. Remember at Hanukkah, we get the ninth day of Hanukkah this year. If they can have two nights of Halloween, we can have an extra night of Hanukkah. Praise God. Let's, uh, let's turn to uh, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to set you up here. And I, I, want, I want you to think outside the box. Therefore, we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the, the sin which is so in, easily entangles us. Let us run the endurance. Let, let's run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author that's the perfecter of our faith, who have, for the joy set before us endures the cross, this, uh, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand uh, of the throne of God. All right. Remember. Witnesses surrounding us. Today, I got this phone call from Chicago. This guy, I'm going to tell you the story. I'm not going to say his name on the, on the internet. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't care. I don't even know his last name anyway. Seriously, I don't. So he calls me up, and I, I see the phone number. I call it back. Oh, it's so-and-so. Well, I dealt with this guy on the phone. And I don't know if these are uh, uh, people with demons calling me to distract me before the Sabbath. I'm serious. <laughs> I've, had some, I've had some Sabbath bombs. How many people have had a Sabbath bomb? Just before the Shabbat, you get something right, you know, that big pie in the face. And so this guy, this guy's on the phone. And it's like, I'm trying to remember who he is. And he goes, oh, yeah, I, now I remember. This guy met his wife, lived with her for 11 years, found, gets married, she had been divorced since when she was 18, got married for about a year, gets divorced from, the, from a guy who had been married. They had lived together a total of 17 years. He gets saved. Praise God. His wife gets saved. Hallelujah. And he starts reading the scripture, so black and white, where it says, if you marry a divorced woman, you're in adultery. So this guy divorces his wife. I'm like, okay, so, the, okay, we saw the straight line, right? We saw the Hebrew cycles, and now we're dealing with circular thinking. You ever see a dog chase his tail? 
It's circular thinking. So this guy is trying to explain to me, because of his in-depth study of the New Testament, that he had to divorce his wife, that he can never get remarried, and that he has to love his wife, even though she's remarried, he has to love her until death, and he's going to pray for me. <laughs> and I said, you know what? My wife's a widow. And he started going, and he, you know, well, you know, this is the New Testament. This is not the Old Testament. This is the New Testament. I go, there's only one Testament. There's one God who was and is and is to come. Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Word. In the beginning, He was the Word, and He was, the, the Word was God. So I, I got on the phone, and I, I really started throwing some stuff at him. And he, he had all these little dance moves for all these different things. And I was sitting there after listening to him, and it's like, if Christ, if we're the church, right, like the bride, and Christ loved the church, we're supposed to act in forgiveness, too. Right? And I was wondering, so since he's an adultery, does he have salvation? He keeps, he's throwing these things at me, like, wow, this guy's really messed up. I, I asked him, I go, how'd you, I said, excuse me, how'd you get so messed up, dude? I told him that. I said, I've never heard anybody tweak the scripture this bad and get so twisted over this, period. Now, that's just one example. We do that throughout Scripture as we interpret Scripture through doctrines, through the Roman Catholic mindset, misinterpretation, misunderstanding, lack of knowledge. We do this over and over and over. We talked last week. Did anybody like that thing while I was teaching about the, the comet last week? Okay. Well, this is part of the sign of the time. We do not know the date. Is that right? So we have this great cloud of witnesses. Where did that cloud of witnesses come from? Let's go back to Matthew. And I've studied this on and on and on and on for a long time. Matthew Matthew 2752. <clears throat> and the tombs were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Coming out of the tombs after the resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. I want you to have an open mind. I'm going to throw some stuff at you tonight. Okay, you, do you see that? Where did those people go? Jesus died on the cross. They came out of the tombs. These were people that were looking unto the cross for the Messiah to come. Where did they go? Did they die? Did they die? You can't die twice. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1. We, something, we see something called the Ascension. Now, what I like about the Ascension, the Muslims believe in the Ascension. Don't they believe in the Ascension? Yes, they do. They believe in the Ascension. They believe that Allah is holding Jesus captive up there, so when he sends Jesus back, so Jesus says he's not the Son of God. That's in the Quran. Is that jacked up? <laughs> All right. Let's, let's look at... Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. As they were glazing intently into the sky while they were departing, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them, and they, and they, they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This J Jesus, Yeshua, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him uh, go into heaven. When he went up, the folks that were in Jerusalem that came out of the graves ascended with him in a cloud. 
Is, is that clear? I'm trying to get consensus. Is that clear? The, the ascension wasn't just Jesus popping up there by himself. It was taking the saints up. <clears throat> now, whew, all right, I'm, I'm building a case here. Then I'm going to get to something. So this is the timeline. This is Christ at the cross. These are the, the, the saints of old. This is the ascension. Now, as... As people die, we got, let's just uh, go like this. As people die, there's no time difference from when you die to the next person. Right? Okay. And there's, that, there's going to be, there's going to be, do, do you see this? And we're, we're here in this area, the church age, as we call it the church age, which is two millennium, this 1,000, 1,000. And there, there's this constant feeding. Now, from here to here, these people are asleep. Asleep. Like I am. <laughs> okay? We, we have a couple issues. One of the reasons why Kimberly is in Korea, and we had this conversation the other day, we get terms mixed up. Okay, because how things are how things are translated. One of the things we're dealing with is one of the reasons we call ourselves messianic is because we also believe in the messianic reign. Uh, put up the the first chart, bro. bro. All y'all. The messianic reign is the thousand year reign how many people can see the board <coughs> this this time here the millennial reign this millennial reign the reason why Kimberly's over there is because the WCC does not believe in the thousand year reign they believe that we may be in it right now and it's not ushered in by the Messiah it's ushered in through peace and love. Everybody getting along. It's a humanism, thousand year reign. Were you here on Sunday? Oh, okay. Well, Kimberly was teaching on this. And what she, the, the thing that, I love my wife. <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes she, she was trying to, she was trying to be vague. She was trying to be politically correct. But you can't be politically correct. There will be a thousand year reign of Christ. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay. What, what happens is there's a clouding going on, not a cloud of people, but there's a clouding going on. You understand how we can get confused? <clears throat> we, we deal with two events, and uh, this is where I'm going to say keep your minds open. Because we start what what the majority of us understand is a post-millennium. Okay? What is a post-millennium? After the 6,000 years. Is that six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Historically, we're right at this point. The 6,000 years. And what happened in the 1880s, excuse me, 1830s, 1840s, 1850s, something happened. You ever hear of Mormonism? Mormonism is Free, Freemason base. Anybody hear of Jehovah Witnesses? Besides that joke I told earlier? Something with the Jehovah Witnesses they thought in the mid-1850s that they were going to get raptured. Anybody hear that? Mm -hmm. They thought they were going to get raptured. Then that didn't happen. And they started growing. And they, they were basing that on 144,000. Then they were basing uh, in 1899. They thought that was 2,000 years. And they thought they were going to get raptured at that time. And then something happened. They had more than 144,000 Jehovah Witnesses at one point. So somebody was going to miss the boat. 
right? And around the 1900s, something happened called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And some of the denominations decided they did not want, because they were, they, come on, these guys were thinking they're going to shoot up and, you know, go right through the ceiling. We're praying in tongues. Everybody thinks we're crazy. We don't want that doctrine in our place. That happened. Now, there's a spiritual law. You get what you believe. Do you believe that? Okay. Now, there's an issue with that because if, if something's not really... Remember, you heard of name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, people? Okay. We have spiritual rights to certain things. We do. But there's a point where if it's not within reason or if it's not because of something you're doing such as sin. Now, this man had put himself in a loop where he's completely unforgiven. And I asked him at the end of my conversation, I said, are you saved? <clears throat> well, are you saved? Because he had himself so wrapped up on one concept, he was missing the fact that he was also forgiven. And he was saying, well, because of this and this and this and this, but he wasn't looking at the Old Testament. I've got the New Covenant and blah, blah, blah. And I tried to explain some stuff and how the Hebrew and there was no Jews in the Old Testament and how the covenant, there's one, one covenant for all mankind. And it's based on what? Based on this. Progressive revelation. As we get closer to this, we will start seeing more and more closer things. What I like about that chart, it says the messianic, the messianic reign. Okay? The messianic millennium. The millennium kingdom. Now this chart, these are written by Clarence, Tom, uh, Clarence Larkin. Clarence Thomas. Hey, Clarence Thomas is a good guy. He is. He's a good, solid Bible believer. But he didn't write this. These were written before Israel was a country. These were written back in the uh, 1880s, 90s, 1900, 1910, 1915. These are about 120 years old. And they, they went and... Um, go ahead, switch to the next slide. All they are. If he, he can pop it up there. We're, we're dealing with, we, we start looking at the, the, how these things are broken down, the flood. It's broken down into different things. Now, this is a perspective from somebody that did not know Israel existed or was going to exist. This is 50 years, 60 years before Israel came back on the planet. The, the thing that I want, to, I want to express today, my wife and I, I finally got her to agree about this, the post-millennial. I said, this is your main argument. If you go over there, your sweet spot, your argument, if you're going to do a case in the court of law, you can win the case of the post millennials We have that right to the church, as the church, for the, the thousand-year reign, because the Messiah is going to come back for that thousand-year reign. You got that one that hands down. You have scripture for it straight across the board. Now, my wife can't swim very good. I told her to stay out of the deep end. And we're going to go in the deep end. Because what's going to happen, remember the table? Okay, we got a table situation. Now, if I showed you this, what is that? That's the top of the table. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's like, remember the, the story about the man trying to describe what a, the three blind men trying to describe an elf, what an elephant is? Have you heard that story? All right. So, we understand there's a post-millennial. Let's go to Revelation. Do you, do, you, do you like this kind of teaching? Do you want to hear some more about this? And I, I've studied this on and on and on and on. Let's go to let's go to First uh, Thessalonians first. <clears throat> first Thessalonians five 
4 through 11. This is a description of the day of the Lord. Oh, take a big breath. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that, you, that the day should overtake you like a thief, for you are all sons of the light and the sons of, of day. We are not of night or of darkness, so, not, uh, so then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be on alert and sober for uh, those who sleep during their sleeping at night and those who get drunk get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of uh, faith and love and the helmet of hope and salvation. For the God has not... Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't read that word. Disdain us from, from the wrath for, for the uh, obtaining of uh, salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who had died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another, build, or build up one another, just as you also are doing. Okay, this is the terrible day of the Lord. He's talking about the future. He's giving us lifestyle situations. A lot of people say it's okay to drink. Wine, alcohol, whatever. When they talk about different kind of alcohol, it, it, when it says wine, it doesn't mean alcohol. New wine. It's actually fresh juice. Well, I don't want to get in an argument. We're not going to get in that argument right now. This is not, that's not what I'm here to talk about. But think about it. If you're drunk, you're a Christian, you're drunk, and you're so drunk, you don't even know Jesus is around, and you get killed. What happens? Where do you go? Purgatory? That's in, that's in, that's in Utah. You go skiing there. I think that's where Sonny Bono died. <laughs> you die in purgatory? <laughs> that's terrible. What if you're in sin, and you're a Christian, and Christ comes back? Or you're in sin and you're a Christian and you die. See, this guy, was, this guy I was talking to today fit perfectly into my conversation because he stuck himself in a loop. There's a point where you can separate, repent, and get yourself back on track. But you know what? You may have to give up some of your vices because it says we're supposed to be a soldier not entangled, not encumbered. So... I want, I want to show a couple concepts that we mistake. Now, we have, we have parallel things going on at once, okay? And I, I'm, going to, I'm going to make this statement at the first here. We have people, and we can argue. We, we talked about last week in, in uh, Revelations 12 about the... Uh, let's go to Revelations 12. We talked about a great sign appeared, and a woman was cloth with the sun and the moon under her feet, and her head was a uh, head of crown of twelve stars. She was with child. She cried out, being in labor and pain, and gave birth. Another sign appeared in the heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven uh, heads, ten horns on his head were, were seven di uh, di diadems, and his tail swept away a third of the stars and threw them uh, to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that uh, when she gave birth, he would devour her, flip, page. And then she gave birth to a, a, a son, a male child, who was, a, who was to rule the, all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up, caught up to God and his throne. So we all agree he, was, he ascended. And the woman fled into the wilderness and had a place prepared by God. We talked about that woman... Actually, not Mary, but the church. Because he's the head, right? We're the body. We're referred to as a woman. And goes into the wilderness, prepares a place in the wilderness. Now, she survives the wilderness as Christ survived the wilderness by what? The Word of God. The Word of God. Word of God. Satan comes to him. Nope, it is written. It is written. It is written. Word of God. Word of God. Okay. 
it goes on, talks about the war in the heavenlies. Then we, we go to 1 Corinthians uh, 15. I'm, a, I'm kind of pushing you through this. I've I got to give you the scripture, but I've got to push you through this. 1 Corinthians 15. And if you understand how 11, 1 Corinthians 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 work. 1 Corinthians 11 is a communion, right? We always have communion. 1 Corinthians 12 is the gifts of the Spirit, right? We always have the gifts of the Spirit. 13 is the love chapter. The love chapter is based on what? If you stop loving God, these gifts will cease. That's how, it doesn't matter if I love you or him, or love, I like him or I don't like it. No, it's about loving him. If you stop loving God, the gifts will cease. People say, well, you know, that was for them back then, you know, the gifts of the Spirit. No, if that was true, chapter 13, chapter 14 would have been flip-flop because chapter 14 is earnestly seek spiritual gifts, prophecy. Paul says in 14, 14, I pray in tongues more than you all. Right? So he's going to continue to praise in tongues. And chapter 15, verse 50, goes back to what? Oh. Uh, 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery... We shall not all sleep, but shall be uh, we. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the la at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will raise, will be raised imperishable, and we shall all be changed. There's a word there, mystery. Anybody see that word, mystery? Let me explain it this way: Nobody's ever going to figure this out until it happens. Now, if you're going to go in a court of law with one argument on the table and you don't know what the other person has, you got one leg you're standing on. You always have, you have to understand what this is and what this is. What are they? They're both tables. What is table in Aramaic? It's actually, actually, the term for Messiah means to clear the table off. Clean it up. All that old stuff's gone. You like that? All right. I'll get back up here. So, I want you to understand, I'm, I'm going to try to give you something here where... People are going to question certain things because you're going to be, let's say you're dealing with the Jehovah Witness. Well, there's no J's in Hebrew, by the way. <laughs> Jehovah's the name of God. All right, this is where we're going to go. Uh, give me the, 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 next, the next slide, please. Um, go ahead, give me the next one after that. Great, I like this. Okay, how long is the tribulation? We can all agree on this, right? How long is the tribulation? Seven years. All right. It's seven years, but the first three and a half, you don't know you're in it. Is that true? You won't know you're in it. Now, the tribulation is down here. And I'm not, I, I don't want anybody walking out or getting mad or we can talk about this later. I, I want to I make this case here so you, got, you can understand sometimes we don't want to get what we say. Now, there are several other folks that understand this and they actually teach this and they understand how this works. And my great grandmother lived next door. We had all we got some Bible theologians in our family. This is not new stuff to me. I've known this since I was maybe five, six, seven years old. My older sister still is traumatized by my grandma trying to explain this to her. <laughs> and she's sixty something right now. This is she's still messed up. Okay. Now you you see this right here? The judgment of reward, right? What happens is, you got the tribulation, is how many years? Seven years. 
How long is, okay, first of all, during the tribulation, what else is going on? The wedding supper? How many people knew that? Okay, so you got the tribulation. You also got the wedding supper. How long is the wedding supper? You're going to get an A today, Pastor. How long is the wedding supper? Seven days. Okay. A day is like a thousand years. Okay. Now, remember Noah, he was on the boat, and he waited how many days before he took off? Seven days. Seven days. He left the door open. After it was full, left it open for seven days. Well, the Shabuas, the unit of measurement, seven days, seven years. The wedding supper on a Hebrew wedding is how long? Seven days. It's a seven-day event. Event. Not specifically the supper, but it's a seven-day event. <laughs> See where I'm coming up? During this time, let's just call it the tribulation, there are something that happens. These, can we see this over here? It says the judgment of rewards. There are the incorruptible crown, the crown of life, the crown of glory, the, the crown of uh, righteousness, the, the crown of judging. These different things are given to the martyrs. It's a victory, the victory crown. These are uh, the elders crown. These are different things that are rewarded to people based on their belief and how they served God while they were here. Does everybody agree that there's something like that? Not because it's on the board. <laughs> okay. This is where I'm going to get you. How many people believe in the post Tribulation rapture. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you where you got, I'm going to tell you where this came from. How many people believe in the pre trib rapture? Okay? I, I don't want you guys running out and beating yourselves up in the parking lot. Okay? Now, based on that, how many different crowns are there? Five. Okay, there's five crowns. When can you earn those crowns? You can, you can earn them now, and you can earn them during this period of time. Let's go to Revelation. Hold on, hold on. I, my, my, I got this all memorized. Hold on. Sometimes my brain doesn't work. Okay. Um, here we are. Revelations 11. And there was given a measuring rod like a staff, and somebody rises to measure the temple of God and the altar and and those who worship in it. Okay, so the, the, we're, we're talking about Israel, and we have, we're, we have the temple up now. Leave out the court, which is alongside the temple. Do not measure it, for it is given to the nations, and they will tread under the foot of the holy city for 42 months. And they will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy uh, for 1260 days, which we've fit, figured out 1260 days, on Hebrew months, 30-day months is 42 months. And, and there are the true, two olive trees, verse uh, 4, the two olive trees and the two lamps stands before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone desires to harm them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours the enemy. If, any, if anyone would desire to harm them in this manner, he must be killed. We, keep, we go down this whole thing, we find out they die, and, and, and then it says there's a... And, and they hear... Verse 12, they hear a loud voice come up from, uh, from heaven saying, come up here. And they went up into heaven in the cloud and their en enemies beheld that. Okay, that is the two witnesses during what time? 
During the tribulation, we agree about that. Right? Okay, let's just put it right in the middle so we're, we're, we, we can't make up our mind, right? They go up in a... Okay, now is that at the beginning of the tribulation? Or at the end of the tribulation? It's in the middle. It's during the tribulation. Okay, can we state... If I was going to make a legal argument, can we say that there's a possibility of having a rapture during the middle? Is that true? Let's go to Matthew 22. <laughs> no, I just remember my verse. I just love this. Okay, Matthew 22. Let's mess up your theology some more. And Jesus spoke to them again in parables. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who was giving a wedding feast for his son. Christ the head of the church. We're the body, right? The son. And so he, went, he sent his slaves out to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast. And they were unwilling to come. They didn't want to go. They didn't believe in something. They were tied to something. They were involved in sin. And again, he sent out the other slaves saying, Tell those who uh, have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat and livestock, all my butchered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. Okay, so he's, he's calling them up again, right? He's saying, come on. That's twice. During the wedding feast. When is the wedding feast? During the same time as the trip. Does that make sense? The marriage supper? Can we see that? Can we, can we understand? that? Listen, we don't have to believe in pre-trip or post-trip, but during this time, there's a wedding feast. Because there's no other place where the wedding feast fits in history or can fit in. Does that make sense? Am I making... Is it, is it clicking? So, but they paid no attention, verse 5, and went their way, one to his own farm, another to his own business, and the, and, and the rest seized his slaves, mistreating them, and killed them. That could be me. <laughs> See? Right? But the king was in rage, and he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding supper is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main highways, as you will find there, to invite uh, to the highways, and as many as you find there, invite them to the wedding feast. Okay, so we got people here that believe in God, but they're rejecting the promise. They're rejecting the ministry, the ministry, the mystery. Whatever it is, they're rejecting it. And so there's a period of time where the Lord himself sends out more servants. The church age, we call it the church age, which is a mis... mis this is actually the messianic age, the church age. But the church age... There's a point of time, this seven years is for what? It's for Israel to understand who the Messiah is. A lot of people say, well, if you're Messianic, you should go to Israel and do Aliyah. I go, I do Aliyah every morning in my bed through the Holy Ghost. I go up to the throne room. I don't need to go over there. Aliyah is for the Jews who rejected Jesus. They are being regathered so he can show who he is to the world again, the Messiah. Does that make sense? So we got the wedding supper, we got the tribulation, and this is a time for uh, Israel. That's seven years. This is, what, this is what we deal with. But during this seven years period, those new people that are invited in go through the same kind of testing that these other folks go through, too. 
Is that true? We're all treated the same. We're not, nobody's special. Hey, it rains on the righteous. It's going to rain on the unrighteous. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Nobody can change this. So what ends up happening, could there be possibilities of multiple taking ups, even to the end, which this day here is the, called the terrible day of the Lord? Have I said anything out of place, Pastor? There's more than one rapture. There's more than one rapture. So if you want to, if, if you want to wait to the end for the last bus, that's up to you. We don't know when the first bus is coming. That's why we need to stay sober. That term sober means spiritually tuned in. This is heavy duty stuff, guys. So, <clears throat> what I was telling my wife is to stay away from this because you're going to have such a diverse audience and they all have these big PhDs in front of their names and they don't know anything and, and you're not going to argue with them because of what? Circular thinking. What I expressed to her is you win the case with the fact that there's a post-millennial reign and that everything we do, no matter how dark it gets, we keep looking forward to the mark that the Messiah is coming. That empowerment during that messianic age, those things are happening. We can see it on our horizon. We have the understanding that that should encourage us so we're going to be stronger in the spirit. So don't get tied up in Things that aren't absolute because you don't know if it's going to look like this or it's going to look like that. Because we know three dimensionally the whole picture. We cannot, the Bible's one dimensional. You can only tell one story at a time, you can only put so much out there. Is this possible? Is that possible? You get the crown someplace. You get the crown someplace. And there's a, it has to do with your belief. How do you serve the Lord? Where are you at right now? And we're going into a scenario where we, people in our own country are calling us an Islamic nation. I, how many people believe that Islam may be part of that one world order? One world government. It's scary. Everything they believe, what we, be we see in the, in the book of Revelation, the beast is their savior. Things that are coming out, of the, out, out now about Islam, it's scary. We cannot be wishy-washy. We will never, th when this happens, it's going to be boom like that. We, don't, you, you may, we may be here, we may be three and a half years. We, we won't know when it hits. I really don't want to spend a lot of time arguing with people and miss the bus. Can you be sitting there arguing with somebody and the bus goes by? And you go, oh, geez, I missed the bus. <laughs> or you're on the phone talking to somebody and you're driving and you miss your turn. Let's not do that. I'm telling you, there's, there's options. There's more than one. There's more crowns because at the end, at the wedding supper, something happens. We get to present our crowns. And that is going to be inclusive of everybody from the beginning to now. Does that make sense? This goes back to the very first person that believed unto the Messiah who was Abel. Did you know Abel believed on the Messiah? He presented a lamb. Ooh. He presented the lamb. He presented the lamb. Hey, Adam probably woke up too. Y'all know what, when we go to heaven, we're going to, you know, there's not really, we're not going to heaven, it's coming down here. All right? And after that millennial reign, can you go back one slide? We got the millennial reign. That's the seventh day. The eighth day, 
after Satan's let, after a thousand years, Satan's let out, the eighth day is the new Jerusalem. There's going to be a re renovation. The eighth day, new beginnings. Everything changes. Our authority during the thousand year reign, we will be able to judge. Not based on what we think, but on the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, now I'm going to open it up. Anybody has a question? Wow. Can, can, can you see how I'm, I, I, don't want, I don't want to pigeonhole us and not say this is not possible? Because you could actually say something where you're going to get yourself in a trap. Wow, I must be really good at arguing. I should, I mean, is that a good case? I make a good case there, Pastor? In 45 minutes? 50 minutes? All right, praise God. Father, we ask that you reveal your mystery to Yeshua house. We ask that you equip us. You give us that anointing for this time. We ask for those crowns to be presented, the salvation, crown of salvation. We ask for that soul winning crown over this house, that many people will come in here and they will change their hearts and their minds to you. We ask you, Father, for that revelation of this time to prepare this congregation, those, the ministries that are within it. We ask, Father, that you should show us in the spirit, in our hearts, in our mind, those things you want us to accomplish at this time, Father. We ask for the prophetic words to be uttered in this place in order, with peace and power. Thank you for the angels. We thank you for your presence tonight. Father, bless this congregation. In Yeshua's name, amen. Now, 